Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Welcome to Pharma Ventures Insights at Genesis 2017 in London. With the rise of personalized medicine, biopharma companies around the world are seeking for efficient and effective ways of doing research before they get into the patients. Now there's a company based in the UK who has come up with a patients in a test tube platform for this reason. Today on the show we have John Moore, CSO of Horizon Discovery. Welcome John. Oh, thanks so much Summer. It's a pleasure to be here. So Horizon Discovery is basically built upon this proprietary translational genomics platform. Can you tell us a bit more about, about this product? Yeah, so when the company was set up 10 years ago um, by Chris Torrance and Alberto Bardelli, they were both former postdocs of Bert Vogelstein, and that laboratory had been making isogenic cell lines using the painful and slow method of homologous recombination. So um, some researchers at the University of Washington discovered a, a more effective way of doing this using the uh, the relatively benign virus, RAAV, and so this increased the efficiency of making cell lines. So um, Chris uh, was my former line manager at Vinales back in 2005 or so, and he left to set this company up with Alberto Bardelli from Turin, providing sort of scientific insights. And they really started selling these cell lines that already existed, plus new ones they were making, to their former colleagues from the Vogelstein labs, who were by this time in fairly senior positions in pharma. So commercially, Horizon had this ready-made market for this, and there was a lot of early uptakes. So at that sort of time, gene editing was, was sparse. Talents hadn't been invented. Zinc fingers were tied up by Sigma and Sangamo. And RAV was, uh, had a similar productivity at the time and had a lot of precision. There were a lot of fears about double-stranded breaks. So this um, sort of platform had a lot of uptake, and we had a lot of early um, excitement from Genotech Novartis, AstraZeneca, in getting these early deals. And really, Horizon's grown from there. So the patients in a test tube model is a way where you can simplify you know, the, all the heterogeneity of patient material into some sort of easily accessible material, which has a high cost to manufacturer, but a low cost to distribute, making it perfect for a sort of, uh, a, a sort of products company to sort of commercialize. But we also started selling services around this, especially for biotech companies who didn't necessarily want to buy our cell lines. Great, and it looks like Horizon Discovery and this platform itself have really been growing um, according to the demand from, from the industry. Yes, yeah, so the, the core platform of Horizon has grown reasonably fast, um, but it's now quite a minor part of our business. So what we've done is acquire to sort of fill horizontal gaps, particularly around gene editing, which has become you know, a lot more uh, accessible and efficient thanks to CRISPR. And um, we sort of are now selling sort of services to pharma and biotech companies around the world. So we've got a, a big active sales force, quite a, a big product catalog of pre-existing cell lines we can sell, um, thousands of which come from our takeover of uh, former haploid genomics in Vienna, which is a haploid cell line model. We've got about 3,000 knockouts of that available in the catalog. But we also make very complex cell models and also animal models for industry. And these days there are products that are commercialized by pharma companies, biotechs, that are built around patient subgroups. So for example, some immuno-oncology products such as Herceptin, you know, that's a classic example of um, being built around a patient subgroup. Do you see a lot of these trends coming up in your customer groups as well? Well, I think back in the sort of late 90s when people were talking about you know, uh, pharmacogenomics, so the Herceptin was really the first example of that. So Genentech commercialized that. It was obviously a major clinical and commercial success. Um, in terms of what Horizon's been doing, which of course came well after that, uh, we built an early sort of um, network of EU grants and the, the company found that Chris Torrance was instrumental in putting these together. So we had a lot of EU funding um, and the major sort of grant we have was Colthera, is where we, we were sort of co-writers and organizers and Alberto Baldelli provided the other side of it. And this was an exercise in building sort of KRAS mutant cell lines. And this was sort of coincident with the discovery that for certain cancer drugs, particularly Erbitux, Cetuximab, um, the presence of a KRAS mutation was predictive of non-response. And because these antibodies yeah, are expensive and they have substantial side effects, there's little point in being treated with a drug that's not going to work. And so Horizon sort of technology aided in pulling this sort of uh, network of cell lines together, 
where we were sort of providing pharma companies to provide an early indication of whether they're going to be subject to the same problems as they develop their drug. So you have clients all around the world and so Horizon Discovery also has um, offices and around the world as well. So it, it, do, you see, do you see a particular trend in you know, sort of where your customers are and where the industry is really growing? So early on we were sort of doing I suppose classic white coat selling to senior people in pharma and biotech around a, a technology which was coming, but difficult to access, difficult to build internally, and we had a lot of impact in doing that, providing a sort of one-stop shop for sort of genetic engineering cell lines, services or cell lines, which is specialized technology. So what we found was that the advent of CRISPR about 2013 made it much easier, at least technically, um, well, not much easier, but somewhat easier for pharma companies to hope to do this itself. And, and CRISPR also had this enormous wave of fashion and trendiness about it, which meant everyone wanted to have a go themselves. So our business model was quite hard to scale at that point. And at that, we sort of tried to get a lot more revenue from the product side. So um, the KRAS uh, type sort of drug resistance stuff we morphed those sort of cell lines into diagnostic products providing standards uh, you know, to run alongside a third-party diagnostic kit. Sometimes it's sort of OEM manufacturer that route to market. And that's given us thousands of customers in diagnostic companies and also cl clear labs around the world. So that's sort of one aspect. We also started to drive the gene editing into bioproduction, particularly the manufacture of antibodies. And uh, here we've been providing an alternative, say, Lonza's technology of Cho cell engineering and hopefully enabling the production of higher levels of antibodies from, mm. from Cho cells. And uh, we also started to do target ID and validation to try and get a piece of the bi biotech value chain. We had collaborations with HV Biomedicine and then with AstraZeneca. And now we're in the sort of, I suppose, period of trying to establish spin-off companies to explore this and have access to capital beyond what Horizon can afford on early stage drug discovery. But most recently, our last acquisition was Darmicon, you could say a consumer focused company, at least from the point of view of lab based workers, with 40,000 customers and a massive sort of product range in RNA interference where they were market leaders. So a lot of the actual growth from Darmicon comes from their more recently used CRISPR products, uh, and together we've got you know, quite a strong position in, in this growing market, competing directly with Sigma and Thermo and other companies. Um, but as a more specialist provider who actually understands the technology really, really well. And so through Darmacon, we've given us additional route for markets for our pre-existing cell line catalogue, which we hope to get out there you know, and, and sort of upsell from RNA reagents and things like that into cell lines um, and really provide sort of high quality tours to academics and workers in, in industry so that um, they can spend a lot less time building the reagents to test their models and more time on the science. And in terms of your business model, you just explained um, your existing product catalog. And, but, but also, obviously, you have the capability to, to create bespoke cell lines or, or models for big clients. What's the split between the bespoke and the sort of off-the-shelf solution? That's very, that's very over time. So at the moment, we're, so in, in the 2016, which is the last financial year we had res results reported for, the split between services and products was about 50-50. Um, in the future, especially from the Darmacon acquisition, we see a much greater contribution of products which are easier to scale. So we, we hope to sell a large product catalog of high quality items from the website. We hope to sell some sophisticated services from the website as well, like functional genomic screens using CRISPR, CRISPR-I, CRISPR-A, etc., etc. Um, and really to scale, we're hoping to build a stronger brand um, and springboard on the Darmacon sort of um, you know, history in this area of genetic modulation to enable us to sell a lot more services as well as products, um, but avoiding a, you know, a highly specialized uh, sales force, mm. you know, which requires you know, seven touches with a customer to sell something. Yeah, so it looks like Horizon Discovery's already become a big part of this pharmaceutical industry and you're working with academics, big pharma, biotech companies, medtech diagnostic companies. So from here, what does success look like and how, how do you envision the company to get there? So we're a very complex company and we could do with being a bit simpler. So we see the product size growing and we're making efforts uh, following the money we raised to fund the Darmacon acquisition. We're going to put some of that to work at, at seeding sort of new biotech ventures where we hope to leverage third party capital 
to you know, start off these spin-off companies in early stage drug discovery. So the areas we're looking at there are synthetic lethality, immuno-oncology, and then in the near future, cell and gene therapy as well. And to exit from these spin-off companies in the form of IPOs? Yeah, so it, it will be limited capital applied for five to six years through to IPO or trade sale. Yeah. Well, this is a very interesting story. It looks like Horizon's doing a lot of different things and succeeding along its way. So thank you very much for your time today, John, and wish you all the best for Horizon. That's my pleasure. Thank you. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.